You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Life is a complex proposition, leading us and leaving us to our own devices to figure out our way and to make sense of life. This is Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia Samuels. Listen as Dr. Samuels helps us to lift ourselves to higher levels of joy in order to truly realize the most meaningful yearnings deep inside all of us. So now, please welcome the host of Highway to Boundless, Dr. Sophia Samuels. Hello and welcome to Highway to Boundless. I'm your host, Dr. Sophia Samuels, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am filled with excitement and enthusiasm for your life, for you are Earth's most remarkable inhabitants and God's most revered creation. Remember the words spoken in the first chapter of Genesis? And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over all the earth. Close quote. Humans are the only species on earth capable of completely altering their environment, and that includes altering ourselves. Such is our dominion on earth, and in ourselves, and no other species on this planet has such power. We have been endowed with mental faculties that exceed in scope, range, and depth the five senses, that is, our ability to see, hear, touch, taste, and smell those very five senses that all other species of the animal kingdom function with. It is primarily those mental faculties, namely our intuition, imagination, will, reason, memory, and perception that separate us from the rest of the animal kingdom. The more we use these higher mental faculties, the greater our reach and grasp of life's finer qualities and of our abilities to enjoy them. You and I are on this planet in a highly evolutionarily rich, transformative era of creation, a time when we will either advance and further evolve as humans or a time that we will continue to exist on the trajectory of decline as a people, as a nation of values, high principles and democracy, and as a planet. And the most staggering idea of all is that whether we rise or whether we fall, it all comes down to individual choice. When we factor in choice on a cumulative basis, our choices affect the destiny of our own lives, the lives of our posterity, and the future of this planet. Each of us can make a profound difference. There are awesome possibilities for your life, and through you, there are awesome possibilities for this nation and for this planet. But it all starts with you as an individual, the individual who will choose to rise and embrace your evolutionary urge for greater possibilities and greater realities. You were truly born with unlimited possibilities, and what becomes possible for you is what you believe is possible for you. As you grow into the greater expressions of your own becoming, you will inevitably realize within yourself greater strengths, greater capabilities, greater desires to give to yourself, to your family, 
to your community and to your country a voice and a service that brightens, uplifts, and strengthens the fabric of the human family. As you grow and become stronger and more realized, a natural outcome is to want to make a difference in the world. Are you thinking one person cannot make such a difference? Then I ask you to remember Abraham Lincoln and his fight to abolish slavery. Gandhi and his peaceful resistance to free India from Britain's colonial rule. Nelson Mandela and his sacrifices and service to rid South Africa of apartheid. Martin Luther King Jr. and his leadership in ushering in the civil rights in the United States. And the list goes on. All of these people grew into their paths to affect the world for good. They were not born into their roles, but they each saw a need and drew on the strength within themselves to answer a social need and destiny's call. So will you, whether as major figures as those just mentioned or as part of the supportive masses that will help to bring about evolutionary and landmark changes to society and to the world, for we are either part of the problem or part of the solution. Either way, it is a choice that each of us will make. A crucial point that I'm trying to make is that as we grow within the realm of our possibilities, as we grow and realize the power that is our inherent birthright, then with whatever circumstances that exist or that arise, we are so much better able to know what best to do and how best to act in ways that are positively sustaining for ourselves and for those around us. In the absence of growing our dreams, of living into our unique possibilities, our lives are lived on a level that is static, more predictable, certainly well-defined, and void of dynamism. I have heard the following story told in various ways, so I will synthesize. The world is filled with riches of every kind, and truly these riches are for the taking. But the most valuable of all places on the planet is the cemetery, filled with the remains of those departed who took with them all of the dreams and possibilities that they declined to fulfill, thus leaving the world less well off for withholding their gifts." To contemplate that the only aspect of our life that we depart with is found in the manner in which we lived our lives is a sobering thought. Riches cannot make us happy any more than poverty makes us saints. Either way, these are earthbound states. But the crown of glory for a well-lived life is not only the footprint that we leave behind on the earth, it is also the light amplitude that follows our status in the universe. In the late 1800s, Leo Tolstoy wrote a fictional book titled The Death of Ivan Illich, wherein Tolstoy chronicled the fictional character Ivan Illich and his experiences and thought processes as he lay dying. Ivan Illich had been a successful lawyer and judge who had periodic episodes of experiencing happiness, but who fundamentally had not been happy. He had a very contentious married marriage to a woman who he never loved. Ivan Illich had sought and realized that which status, moderate success, and social standing could provide. But within it all, he came to know emptiness and despair. In the days preceding his final breath, Ivan asks himself the question, what if my whole life has been wrong? Who would want to live only to come to death's door and proclaim that life had been lived in an unhappy, unfulfilled way? 
Unfortunately, this is the life and death that far too many people experience. Such a life is one of unfulfilled dreams, unfulfilled desires, unfulfilled expectations, and unfulfilled possibilities. And how does an individual know this? By the way you feel each day of your life. It goes without saying that life is is not a picnic. On the other hand, life was created that we might know joy. Well, it is time to break. You're listening to Highway to Balance with your host, Dr. Sophia, transmitting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we return, I will speak of Thoreau. Please stay with us. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 BC when the Sumerians invented the first written language and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 BC to the time that men began achieving political power around 3000 BC. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Sophia, on Highway to Boundless, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, before the break, we were talking about how we know that we are living a fulfilled life with our dreams fulfilled. And I was saying that the way that we can know is by how we feel. And I was talking about joy and that we were each created to know joy. Joy is not a fleeting state of being. Joy is sustainable over time. Happiness, on the other hand, is tempered by momentary gratification that has no lasting effects. Joy is experienced in such instances as when you graduate from college and attain a degree that employs your knowledge, gifts, and talents for an equally compensatory salary, joy is experienced when an invention that you have worked on for so long is now in its completed state and fully usable. Joy is when you have pulled through an exceedingly difficult period of your life and can now look back and see all of the growth and changes that you have experienced for the better. Joy is experienced when you give birth to a long-awaited child. Joy is experienced when you are finally writing that book you have so long thought of. Joy is the consequence of experiencing something of great value to ourselves and to others. There is no compromise to this joy. On July 4th, 1845, just shy of his 28th birthday, 
Henry David Thoreau moved into a small cabin he had just built for $28.12 using materials he had recycled. He called this two-year, two-month, two-day venture the experiment. Thoreau stated that the purpose for this venture was as follows. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life, and to see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live life that was not life. Living is so dear. I wanted to live deep and suck the marrow out of life, close quote. After Thoreau's experiment was completed, an experiment which was thoroughly rewarding to him and which taught him, among other things, a code for successful living to the fullest degree, he wrote in his book, Walden, I learned this at least by my experiment, that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with success unexpected in common hours. Close quote. The Thoreau quotes that I just shared with you, I've studied for several years. Therefore, I will interpolate. What Thoreau's quote is saying to us is that when we advance confidently, that is, when we move confidently in the direction of our dream, not when we have reached our dream, and we endeavor to live the life we have imagined, that is, we put on that life, we live it as though that dream has already come into reality, we will meet with a success unexpected in common hours, meaning that we will not fail to realize the success of our dreams when we have persisted and maintained focus on the course of that dream until the time of its full flowering. Without a purpose, that conforming sense of direction that accommodates to our true north which usually first emerges in our mind as a faint idea until entertained long enough and strong enough to assume a fixed state in our life. Yes, without purpose, we live life as ships on the ocean, moving in whichever direction the wind blows. We do not find ourselves on a definite course to arrive at a definite end. We are merely subject to the currents of nature and the most expedient needs of life. And yet, this is definitely not how we were created to be and to live. For as Genesis tells us, we were created in the image and likeness of God. And God is certainly on purpose, intentional, proactive, and ever creative. We are his spiritual offspring, and it is not only through giving full expression to what we may become, through allowing ourselves to transverse the cycles of transformation and renewal, that we leave this life as a bona fide masterpiece. I will now tell you a story of such an experience. This story has significantly wonderful and profound truth to tell that pertains to each of our lives. This story captures the essence of Highway to Boundless and this radio show. I hope that you enjoy it and hear it out completely, for that is where the icing is. It's title, Hope for the Flowers, by Trina Paulus. Once upon a time, a tiny striped caterpillar burst from the egg, which had been home for so long. Hello, world, he said. It sure is bright in the sun. I'm hungry, he thought, and straightway began to eat the leaf he was born on. And he ate another leaf and another and another and got 
bigger and bigger and bigger until one day he stopped eating and thought, there must be more to life than just eating and getting bigger. It's getting dull. So so Stripe crawled down from the friendly tree, which had shaded and fed him. It's time for a break. You are tuned into Highway to Boundless, and I'm your host, Dr. Sophia, broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. On our return, I will continue with our Hope for the Flowers. I know you'll enjoy this. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone, anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 Now is your time. Welcome back. This is your host, Dr. Sophia, with and on Highway to Boundless, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Before the break, I was sharing with you that Stripe had come to the realization that there was more to life than eating and sleeping. He was seeking more. There were all sorts of new things to find. Grass and dirt and holes and tiny bugs each fascinated him, but nothing satisfied him. When he came across some other crawlers like himself, he was especially excited But they were so busy eating, they had no time to talk, just as Stripe had been. They don't know any more about life than I do, he sighed. Then one day Stripe saw some crawlers really crawling. He looked around for their goal and saw a great column rising high into the air. When he joined them, he discovered... The column was a pile of squirmy, pushing caterpillars, a caterpillar pillar. It appeared that the caterpillars were trying to reach the top, but the top was so lost in the clouds that Stripe had no idea what was there. So he felt new excitement, like sap rising in the spring. Maybe I'll find what I'm looking for. Full of agitation, Stripe asked a fellow crawler, Do you know what's happening? I just arrived myself, said the other. Nobody has time to explain. We're so busy trying to get to wherever they're going up there. But what's at the top, continued Stripe. No one knows that either. But it must be awfully good because everybody's rushing there. Goodbye, I have no more time to talk. He plunged into the pile. Stripe's head was bursting with new drive. He couldn't get his thoughts together. Every second, another crawler passed him and disappeared into the pillar. 
There's no, there's only one thing to do. He pushed himself in. The first moments on the pile were a shock. Stripe was pushed and kicked and stepped on from every direction. It was climb or be climbed. No more fellow caterpillars on this stripes pile. They became only threats and obstacles which he turned into steps and opportunities. The single-minded approach really helped and Stripe felt as he was getting much bigger. But some days it seemed he could only manage to keep his place. It was especially then that an anxious shadow nagged inside. What's at the top? It whispered. Where are we going? On one exasperated day, Stripe couldn't stand it any longer and actually yelled back, I don't know, but there's no time to think about it. A little yellow caterpillar he was crawling over gasped, What did you say? I was just talking to myself, Stripe mumbled. It really isn't important. I was just wondering where we're going. You know, Yellow said, I was wondering that myself, but since there's no way to find out, I decided it wasn't important. She blushed at how silly this sounded, quickly adding, no one else seems to worry about where we're going, so it must be good. But she blushed again. How far are we from the top? Stripe answered gravely, Since we're not at the bottom and we're not at the top, we must be in the middle. Oh, said Yellow, and they both began climbing again. But now Stripe had a a new feeling. He felt bad. He had lost his single-mindedness. How can I step on someone I've just talked to? Stripe avoided Yellow as much as possible, but one day... There she was, blocking the only way up. Well, I guess it's you or me, he said, and stepped squarely on her head. Saying in the way Yellow looked at him, something, something. And then that made him feel awful about himself, like no matter what is up there, it just isn't worth it. Stripe crawled off Yellow and whispered, I'm sorry, and Yellow began to cry. Excuse me. I could stand this life hoping in what was ahead until I met you talking to yourself that day. Since then, my heart just hasn't been in it. I don't know what to do. I don't know how bad, I didn't know how badly I felt about this life until then. Now when you look at me so kindly, I know for sure I don't like this life. I just want to do something like crawl with you and nibble grass. Stripe's heart leaped inside. Everything looked different. The pillar was now made no sense at all. I would like that too, he whispered. But this meant giving up the climb, a hard decision. Yellow dear, maybe we're close to the top. Maybe if we help each other, we can get there quickly. Maybe, she said, but they both knew this wasn't what they wanted. Let's go down, Yellow said. Okay, and they stopped climbing. They clung to each other as masses of caterpillars crawled over them. The air was terrible, but they were happy with each other and made a big ball so nobody could step in their eyes and stomachs. They did nothing at all for what seemed a long time. Suddenly, they didn't feel anything crawling over them. They unrolled and opened their eyes. They were at the side of the caterpillar pillar. Hi, Stripe, said Yellow. Hi, Yellow, said Stripe and they crawled off into some fresh green grass to eat and take a nap. Just before they fell asleep, Stripe hugged Yellow. Being together like this is sure different from being crushed in the crowd. It sure is. She smiled and closed her eyes. So Yellow and Stripe romped in the grass and ate and grew fat and loved each other. 
They were so glad not to be fighting everybody every moment. It was like heaven for a while. But as time passed, even hugging each other seemed a little boring. Each knew every hair of the other. Stripe couldn't help wondering, there must still be more to life. Yellow saw how restless he was and tried to make him extra happy and comfortable. Just think how much better this than that awful mess we left, she said. But we don't know what's at the top, he answered. Maybe we were wrong, wrong to come down. Maybe now that we've rested, the two of us could make it to the top. We have come to the time for another break. You are listening to Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia, broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I will continue the story of Stripe and Yellow when we return. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Hi, my name is Myra Fox, and I am a survivor. I am the founder of the Castle Lewis I Survived Foundation and the author of a series of books entitled I Survived a Murder Untold, which tells the story of my sister and I who were abandoned and left in the care of a woman who beat us repeatedly. Unfortunately, it resulted in the death of my sister, Castle Lewis, which is revealed in a page-to-page chilling story. After spending time in the foster care system, I've documented my suffering and my loss and ultimately my survival. I'm blessed to work daily in my community and surrounding areas to give back by helping others and feeding the homeless. I want to spread awareness of the dangers of abuse. You can purchase my books and contribute to the Castle Lewis I Survive Foundation by visiting www.castlelewis.com or you can call us at 540-999-8401. Thank you. It is good to have you back with us. I am your host, Dr. Sophia, on Highway to Boundless, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, before the break, Stripe had gotten to the point where he was restless and wanted to know what was at the top of the pile, and he was talking about returning to make the climb again. Dear Stripe, please... Yellow begged. We have a nice home and we love each other, and that's enough. It's so much more than all those lonely climbers have. She was so sure. Stripe let her convince him, but only for a while. Stripe's hankering for the climbing life worsened. The pillar haunted him. He crawled there regularly, looking up and wondering, but the top remained clouded. One day at the pillar, three thuds startled Stripe. Three big caterpillars had fallen from some place and smashed. Two seemed dead, but one still wiggled. Stripe whispered, what happened? Can I help you? He made out just a few words. The top. They'll see. Butterflies alone. The caterpillar died. Stripe crawled home and told Yellow. They were both very somber and quiet. What did the mysterious message mean? Had the caterpillars fallen from the very top? Finally, Stripe announced, I've got to know. I must go and find out the secret of the top. And more gently, will you come and help me? 
Yellow struggled inside. She loved Stripe and wanted to be with him. She wanted to help him succeed. But she just couldn't believe that the top was worth all it asks, all it asks to get there. She wanted to get up too. The crawling life wasn't enough for her either. She also had to admit that it looked like the pile was the only way to do it. Stripe seemed so sure that Yellow felt ashamed not to agree. She also felt stupid and embarrassed since she could never put her reasons into words that this kind of logic would accept. Yet somehow waiting and not being sure was better than action she couldn't believe in. She couldn't explain, she couldn't prove anything, but for all of her love, she couldn't go with Stripe. She just knew climbing was a wrong way to get high. No, she said, heartsick, and Stripe left her for the climb. Yellow was desolate without Stripe. She crawled daily to the pile looking for him and returned home at night, sad, but half relieved that she never saw him. If she had, she feared she might plunge after him knowing that she shouldn't. She felt like doing something, anything, rather than this uncertain waiting. What in the world do I really want, she sighed. It seems different every few minutes, but I know there must be more. Finally, she became numb and wandered away, from everything familiar. One day a gray-haired caterpillar hanging upside down on a branch surprised her. He seemed caught in some hairy stuff. You seem in trouble, she said. Can I help? No, my dear. I have to do this to become a butterfly. Her whole insides leapt. Butterfly, that word, she thought. Tell me, sir, what is a butterfly? It's what you are meant to become. It flies with beautiful wings and joins the earth to heaven. It drinks only nectar from the flowers and carries the seeds of love from one flower to another. Without butterflies, the world would soon have few flowers. It can be true, or can't it be true, gasped Yellow. How can I believe there's a butterfly inside you or me when all I see is a fuzzy worm? How does one become a butterfly, she asked pensively. You must want to fly so much that you're willing to give up being a caterpillar. You mean die, asked Yellow, remembering the three who fell out of the sky. Yes and no, he answered. What looks like you will die, but what's really you will still live. Life is changed, not taken away. Isn't that different from those who die without ever becoming butterflies? And if I decide to become a butterfly, Yellow said hesitantly, what do I do? Watch me. I am making a cocoon. It looks like I'm hiding, I know, but a cocoon is no escape. It is an in-between house where the change takes place. It's a big step since you can never return to caterpillar life. During the change, it will seem to you or to anyone who might peek that nothing is happening, but the butterfly is already becoming. It just takes time. And there's something else. Once you are a butterfly, you can really love the kind of love that makes new life. It's better than all the hugging caterpillars can do. Oh, let me go and get stripe, Yellow said. But she sadly knew he was too far into the pile to possibly reach. Don't be sad, said her new friend. If you change, you can fly and show him how beautiful butterflies are. Maybe he will want to become one too. Yellow was torn in anguish. What if Stripe comes back and I'm not there? What if he doesn't recognize my new self? Suppose he decides to stay a caterpillar. At least we can do something as caterpillars. 
we can crawl and eat, we can love in some way. We need to take a short break. I am your host, Dr. Sophia, on Highway to Boundless, and we are coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we return, more of our flowering story. We'll be right back. Dr. Rob Moyer is the director of the Ocean River Institute, and he is passionate about saving the ocean by helping dolphins suffering from nitrogen pollution. Nitrogen is a dangerous pollutant, affecting our oceans, altering ocean ecosystems, and contributing to global warming. The Ocean River Institute provides opportunities to make a difference and encourages people to go the distance for savvy stewardship of a greater and bluer planet Earth. Partnered with organizations from Massachusetts to Florida, Alaska to the Caribbean, the Ocean River Institute's mission is to foster involvement in conservation and environmental monitoring by facilitating grassroots efforts at local and regional levels. Hello, I'm Rob Moyer of the Ocean River Institute. Please visit our website at oceanriver.org. Sign up for free e-alerts. You may call us at 617-661-6647. Our email address is info at Ocean River. Become informed and then act with us. Thank you. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. It is a pleasure to have you with us. You are listening to Highway to Boundless, and I am your host, Dr. Sophia, broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, before the break, Yellow has reached a point where she is trying to decide whether she's willing to go into a transformative state. And she continues with these thoughts. How can two cocoons get together at all? How awful to get stuck in a cocoon. How could she risk the only life she knew when it seemed so unlikely she could ever be a glorious winged creature? What did she have to go on, seeing another caterpillar who believed enough to make his own cocoon? And that caterpillar and that particular hope which had kept her off the pillar and left within her when she heard about butterflies. The gray-haired caterpillar continued to cover himself with silky thread. As he wove the last bit around his head, he called, Well, you'll be a beautiful butterfly. We're all waiting for you. And Yellow decided to risk for a butterfly. For courage, she hung right beside the other cocoon and began to spin her own. Imagine, I didn't even know I could do this. That's some encouragement that I am on the right track. If I have inside me the stuff to make cocoons, maybe the stuff of butterflies is there too. Stripe made much faster progress this time. He was bigger and stronger since he had taken time out. From the beginning, he determined to get to the top. He especially avoided meeting the eyes of other crawlers. He knew how fatal such contact could be. He tried not to think of yellow. His discipline, he disciplined himself neither to feel nor to be distracted. Stripe didn't seem just disciplined to others. He seemed ruthless. Even among climbers, he was special. He didn't think he was against anybody. He was just doing what he had to if he was to get to the top. 
Don't blame me if you don't succeed. It's a tough life. Just make up your mind, he would have said to any caterpillar who complained. Then one day, he was near his goal. Stripe had done well, but when light finally filtered down from the top, it was close. To, he was close to exhaustion. At this height, there was almost no movement. All held their positions with every skill of lifetime, of a lifetime of climbing that they had experienced. Every small move counted terribly. There was no communication, only the outsides touched. They were like cocoons to one another. Then one day Stripe heard a crawler above him saying, none of us can get any higher without getting rid of them. Soon after, he felt tremendous pressure and shaking. Then came screams and falling bodies. Then silence. Lots more light and less weight from above. Stripe felt awful with this new knowledge the mystery of, pil- of the pillar was clearing. He now knew what had happened to the three caterpillars. He now knew what must always happen on the pillar. Frustration surged through Stripe, but as he was agreeing this was the only way up, he heard a tiny whisper from the top. There's nothing here at all. It was answered by another Quiet, fool. They'll hear you down the pillar. We're where they want to be. That's what's here. Stripe felt frozen. To be so high and not high at all, it only looked good from the bottom. The whisper came again. Look over there, another pillar. And there, too, everywhere. Stripe became angry as well as frustrated. My pillar, he moaned, only one of thousands, millions of caterpillars climbing nowhere. Something is really wrong, but what else is there? His life with yellow seemed so far away. That wasn't it either, not quite. Yellow, he let her image fill his being. You knew something, didn't you? Was it courage to wait? Maybe she was right. I wish I were with her. I could go down, he thought. I'd look ridiculous, but maybe it's better than what's happening here. But Stripe thought, but Stripe's thought was interrupted by burst of movement all over his level. Each seemed to be making a last effort to find some entry to the top. But with every push, the top layer tightened. Finally, one caterpillar gasped. Unless we try together, nobody will reach the top. Maybe if we give one big push, push, they can't hold us down forever. But before they could act, there were cries and commotion of another kind. Stripe struggled to the edge to see the cause. A brilliant yellow-winged creature was circling the pillar, moving freely. A wonderful sight. How did it get so high without climbing? When Stripe poked out his head, the creature seemed to recognize him. It extended its legs and tried to grab him. Stripe caught himself just before being pulled out of the pile. The brilliant creature let go and looked sadly into his eyes. That look activated excitement. Stripe hadn't felt since he first saw the pillar. Words from the past returned. Butterflies alone. Is this a butterfly? And what did it mean? The top. They'll see. It was all so strange and yet like it was supposed to be. And those eyes with a look of yellow. Could it be? Such impossible thoughts yet the excitement inside wouldn't stop. He grew happy. Somehow, he could escape. He could be carried away. But as this possibility became real, something else grew inside. He felt he he shouldn't escape like this. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the time for another break. You are listening to Highway to Balance with your host, Dr. Sophia 
transmitting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. There is a reunion in the making. Stay tuned. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact the symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. I am delighted that you are with us. This is Highway to Boundless, and I'm your host, Dr. Sophia, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, Stripe is now thinking that there's more to life than this climb to nowhere. Looking into the creature's eyes, he could hardly bear the love he saw. He felt unworthy. He wanted to change, to make up for all the times he had refused to look at the other. He tried to tell her what he felt. He stopped struggling. The other stared at him as though he were mad. He turned around and began down the pillar. This time he didn't curl up. He stretched out full length and looked straight into the eyes of each caterpillar. He marveled at the variety and beauty, amazed that he had never noticed it before. He whispered to each, I've been up. There's nothing there. Most paid no attention. They were too intent on climbing. One said, it's sour grapes, he's bitter, I bet he never made it to the top. But some were shocked and even stopped climbing to hear him better. One of these whispered in anguish, don't say it even if it's true, what else can we do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the, uh, we are on the downside of our show. And because there is so little time left, I am going to stop right here and I will finish the story next week. So please come back and tune in to hear what happens. Um, One of the things that I would like to share with you is that um, between, between now and when we come back, I want you to be thinking about a couple of ideas. Number one, I would like for you to keep in mind that on June 8th through June 10th, Mary Morrissey, founder of the Life Mastery Institute, and my mentor and teacher is holding a three-day Dream Builder live event in Arlington, Virginia. The cost to attend is nominal. This is an exciting fun and very dynamic event that will rivet you. You have my word on it. To learn more about 
this Dream Builder live event and to register, please visit www.dreambuilderlive.com forward slash high dash way dash two dash boundless. Please do not delay if you are interested in attending for every Dream Builder live event sells out completely before each event even starts. Also, I announced last week for the first time that I have a contest going on. This will be a drawing for a great book by Brendan Burchard, and I have added to that a $500 scholarship that would go towards the cost of my foundational program, The Dream Builder, wherein you would work with me for three months as your coach. To enter, please send an email to me at Boundless, I have a question at gmail.com, all words completely spelled out and in lowercase. The drawing will be held on Thursday, May 31st. I will announce the winner on my show that day. In your email, leave your name and phone number and a message stating that you are entering yourself for the contest draw on May the 31st. Well, finally, I'd like to share with you that next week I will lay out the steps that you can follow to discover your dreams to be transformed into the being that seeks its expression as the higher, better version of yourself, the more true and real part of your creation. You have been listening to Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia Samuels, having broadcast live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Take good care. Until next time. This has been Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia Samuels. Join us each week as we address and highlight the way to realizing the life we long to live. Here on Dr. Samuels' Highway to Boundless. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.